Um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about some things that have already been spoken about today, um, briefly. And I'm going to be brief because I've got like less, minus 15 minutes or whatever. Um, so this is, as you can see, I've just changed the concept of English heritage to historic England and we're going to be talking about concepts. So in the beginning was the term, and the term was good. Come on. And the term was used for the concept, except it wasn't the concept. And this is the fundamental problem we always had. We created control vocabularies, and those control vocabularies go all the way back to the OS um, index cards. So don't blame me. It's the Ordnance Survey's fault, not mine. And um, we took those concepts, the idea of a tumulus and a barrow, and then we tried to standardize them because computers came along. When we had index cards, everyone could look at the card and go, oh, that's fine, yeah, I can know exactly what I mean when I see the word tumulus or the word barrow. It's this drawing on this little index card. It's great, wonderful. As soon as computers came along, computer says, no, can't have that. Can't have barrow and tumulus because how are you going to find anything? So we started standardizing. 1995, the first um, integrated thesaurus of monument types, so that integrated the old RCHME um, thesaurus of architectural terms and thesaurus of archaeological terms into the thesaurus of monument types. In 1999, that became this super cutting edge, wonderful thing, um, which was a flat HTML thesaurus, but at the time, this was groundbreaking. No one had ever seen anything like this. And here we have the greatest term known to man, uh, pillbox, which is actually all the reason we're here. You know, archaeology, <laughs> architecture, <laughs> pillboxes, yes, <laughs> get in. Um, at the moment, this is just a term, as I say, it's just the word, and we use that word to index a record in a database. This is not a classification. We are not saying that this thing is a pillbox. We are saying to find this thing, you need to enter that term, and that's the difference between someone saying, but it's a Wooten Hill style enclosure, and someone saying, but to find it, it's just an enclosure. That's all you need to know. It's not, we're not categorizing in that sense. So I know you're saying that um, you, you, this, is the, this is the fundamental difference between me as a knowledge organization builder and you as someone with an academic, I assume, background because you've got a PhD, sorry Jane. Um, we have much difficulty, and this is true in historic England, this is true across the whole board, even in the introduction to heritage assets at the moment. You can look in the same document, in one document, and you will see cart shed spelled three different ways. By, and that's been written by one person. <laughs> I'm trying to solve that problem, get rid of all the cart sheds and just have one. Um, now at the moment, that's, you think that's great, words, excellent, people can use the same word. They could, in actual fact, I've used linked data from day one because we've always said there's the URI or what we would refer to in the olden days as the URI that's the unique identifier for that concept within our database and that's where we move we're now thinking about we're not thinking about terms now thesauri are dead if you if you if you take that thought on board today that's the only thing you leave with thesauri are dead what we're now talking about is buckets of concepts and um, this is where linked data comes in. So we've always made our stuff available online under an open license. Um, so we were always one star data from even from that HTML. Uh, we've always made it available as structured data. We provided it as CSV data. Um, so we were always, always three star. Okay, we didn't use URIs in the traditional, in the new traditional sense, but we had our own kind of URIs. Um, and we didn't really link to anything, except we did, because that, that web page there is automatically linked to the Plascape database. So if you see a term in a Plascape database, you can click on that and it will go to that link and it will show you what we mean by the term pillbox. So this is the key, um, and you'll have seen the key on Chris's document. So it um, came out of an AHRC funded project called Seneschal, which was the world's worst acronym, <laughs> for starters. Um, again, don't blame me, I came up with tacos and nachos. 
And what it was was a project involving um, the former, the organisation formerly known as English Heritage, um, the Royal Commissions for Wales, Scotland, the University of Glamorgan as it was and now South Wales, and the ADS, and also, I didn't put it on here, but the Bespoke Heritage User Groups um, used case studies as well. Bespoke HEI User Groups, I should say. So we now have four-star linked data, and we're working on number five. So this is heritagedata.org and it provides a one-stop shop to the whole of the UK cultural heritage vocabularies. That's not just the English, sorry, the historic England control vocabularies, um, but it is also the Welsh vocabularies, which are the English ones with a few terms taken out, the Scottish vocabularies, which are the English ones with a few terms added, um, and soon the Northern Irish and the Republic of Ireland as well. We're currently working on getting their data in. It's available to download as PDF, for the old school paper lovers. Available to download as SCOS, as RDF, for, for that, that's for geeks. And for computers and Dan Pet, it's also available as a Sparkle endpoint. I do believe that Dan has been sent from the future to make sure that Skynet does become self-aware. Uh, here we see um, the basic concept search, um, where you can find the beautiful word that is pillbox, and in its many varied forms. That takes you through then to a. Uh, this, is, this is the actual record, the SCOS concept of pillbox. There's the URI. That will never change. That will never change. And in actual fact, look, that's never changed. 68900 is still there. However, it is going to die very soon. Um, and by die, I mean it's going to be denigrated. It's going to be um, deprecated, should I say. Because. Um, this is a, term, a concept, sorry, in a thesaurus, an old thesaurus, thesaurus of monument types. Um, and now that we've got these control vocabularies, we can start mapping them to each other and saying that the concept of pillbox in the Royal Commission, Scotland thesaurus, and one in the Historic England thesaurus, and one in the Welsh thesaurus, are the same concept. So then what we're going to do is going to go, right, let's build a brand new thesaurus then. So that's what we're building. We're building the thesaurus of cultural heritage. It's the British and Irish thesaurus of cultural heritage, but that's got a rather unfortunate acronym. Um, not as unfortunate as the original one, but I won't even repeat that there. Um, and that, what that's going to do is it's going to take each of these individual thesauri um, and say, well, you know, it's no longer a monument type. It's, it's just going to be a concept within the uber overarching thesaurus of cultural heritage which means that we can then say, right, okay, these monument types can link to these periods, can link to these kinds of artifacts, whereas before you've just had to say, this monument could be related to this other kind of monument. In this new structure, which is a proper, true um, sort of web of knowledge um, and a, almost a, a wiki, it's going to be a sort of self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. It's, it's, um, we've always said what we wanted is something that will act as a resource in its own right. It won't just be the way that you can find the things that you'd want to find, but it will be able to teach you about monuments and objects. Because with this system, we can add images, we can add documents. So you can, rather than just having a small scope note for a concept, you could have multiple documents telling you what exactly what it we mean by pillbox. It also gets rid of the exclusivity because we can now, with a concept, you can have as many labels as you like. You can say, this is a Wharton Hill style enclosure, it's a gusset style settlement. You can say whatever you like, as long as you define the concept clearly. Those labels can be in multiple languages, they can be in dialect terms, they can be in regional terms, whatever you want. This is given as the capability. You won't have to change anything in your database, but instead of indexing the term against your record, you index the URI. And once you get around that concept of indexing the concept, the labels don't matter and the labels can change as often as you like and you can have spelling mistakes in there, you can do whatever you like. It's wonderful. This is, as you know, Chris had a, an example of linked data. We're already being linked, so we are kind of five star because we're being linked through from Dan's Portal Antiquities, um, although we're not linking back yet. And there's the ubiquitous mug shot. <laughs> Because you have to, if you talk about linked data, you have to add the mugshot. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. So that's all I've got to say. Um, in 10 minutes, I can't really talk about, you know, can't go into much detail about these things. And to be fair, I don't really know anything about linked data anyway. I built this all right for a living. Um, 
So, um, but yeah, you know, if you've got any questions, I'm more than willing to try and answer them. <coughs> hey, thank you. Right.